Okay, so let's go to the next part, but I think the next part will be easy after you have the first part done. The next part is all about running uh, application. Okay, so okay, so let's start the second part. Right, uh, same. I'll just go directly to the second part. So the second part will be about digital uh, OpenCV applications. So OpenCV, uh, mainly we use this uh, for the digital image processing. Digital image processing, because like the, the image that we get is not the analog type. We are not using the film and so on. We are using a digital image that take directly from the sensor. So um, digital image processing is the process that we 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 how to say we process the images using some algorithm in order to achieve certain uh, objective. For example, we can achieve like classification. Classification means uh, we can classify like object in the in the niche. Features extraction. Feature extraction means a certain uh, how to say a standard pattern that exists. So that um, this is something like for example we want to do object recognition. So object recognition for example that object itself is a standard pattern that we want to find whether if the similar pattern exists in uh, in a given in, in a given image and so on. So multi-scale signal processing, uh, signal analysis, pattern recognition, projection and so on. So we, we have, uh, we can do many things, right? For, for image processing, use an algorithm to process the image data to obtain certain objective or to obtain more information, okay? Higher level information, right? So um, I'm not going into detail of all these algorithm, okay? Because like to explain the algorithm, it might take very, very long time, okay? So it's for you to explore uh, the algorithm. And I already show you like, okay, the following few example is taken from the, yeah, okay, it's not here, but just now I explained to you the uh, OpenCV APPS uh, package, right? So that, is the page that you can find additional materials in terms of, for example, what kind of algorithm, what kind of library, what kind of calculation it takes in order to achieve uh, the, the, the example that I show you. Okay, so in this example, I only focus on showing you what example can achieve what kind of objective. But if you want to know the theory part, you want to know the calculation part, please go back to the uh, homepage to find what kind of uh, algorithm they use and with that you can actually go to OpenCV site documentation to find exactly the calculation or the algorithm okay you can find very detailed over there right but, but I'm not going to cover those things in over here over here I'll focus on running the example with you okay so the first thing um, we are we're going to run is this cam shift object tracking right so this cam shift object tracking um, is we using color okay we want to track a patch of color, for example, like red color, blue color, a group. Okay, so this uh, OpenCV library will, or, or this OpenCV application will help us to find one group of, for example, we select like blue. Then it will find what is the largest area uh, of blue color in this image. And then it will start to track this area that have the same or the very similar color that you select. Okay. So this is what uh, the cam shift object tracking and how it actually automatically, uh, how to say, determine the, the size of the region and also the movement of region. You can find the calculation uh, or the algorithm from the OpenCV documentation, okay? Right, so in order to run this, we first, we bring up, it depends on what kind of camera you use, you bring up, then you need to check your image topic, which is, if you are using USB camera, the most uh, yeah, the most common one is you are using the USB camera package, and uh, for the color image is USB camera image raw because USB camera only can give you color images. Okay, it cannot give you other thing. Then if you are using Astra or other RGBD, then you cho you should choose the RGB uh, topic so that you can get the color image. Right. Then you fit this image topic to your launch node. Okay, so in order to launch the application in OpenCV APPS apps um, package, the format is like this. So you ROS launch OpenCV apps, the topic, uh, sorry, the package name, then the, the application name. For example, over here, we're using the camshift, so camshift.launch, and 
After that, you need to put the argument, which is uh, you need to do the remapping of the image. You need to tell what is the image topic. So over here, the image topic is USB cam image raw if you are using the USB cam. Or you are, if you are using the Astria, so image equals to camera RGB image raw. All right. OK, so for this, I'm going to I'm not going to do the, the demo by myself. I'm going to invite Jupiter robot to do the, the demo. Right. So um, can I have um, Jupiter robot Max to show us the uh, example? Yes, OK, yes, so yes. Max, please show us the, the this example. Uh, OK, all right. Uh, yeah, you can you can take my, my screen. Uh, OK, uh, yeah. hello everyone. I'm Max, and yep. I will introduce uh, our some interesting questions yep. uh, to my partner okay. Yuan. Okay. Okay, Max, show the first one, cam shift only. Oh, okay. 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 And uh, there are a lot of uh, objects, and uh, we will show the uh, object chalking. And, okay, uh, so I can see Max is using the Jupiter I/O on the left hand side. And then the camera is actually pointing on the server object in front. You can see, all right, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, okay. So this is the the Jupiter I/O, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is the Jupiter I/O. So the Jupiter I/O actually run the same OS as the Jupiter OS, uh, similar to the robot. So you can see the same interface, like what I have shown you just now. So the first thing is we, we we do the bring up. So we bring up the Astra camera. So as you can see over here for Jupiter IO, uh, they are running Astra launch. Okay, instead of multiple because like the IO only have one camera. So they are using the Astra launch. All right. Then after you bring up. Okay. So you launch the OpenCV apps. Yeah. Then you specify the topic. Image equals to. Oops. Okay, let's look at the topic first. So you have all this very similar like just now, but you only have one set because you only have one camera. So it's the camera RGB image raw. Okay. Okay, good. Right, so now we have the cam shift demo uh, output. Okay, so we have, uh, you can see two windows. One is the one with uh, the camera feed and another one on the left hand side is the histogram. So just now uh, Max just selected the color and then it actually show you the histogram, which is that color is what selected. And then the yeah, you can see like when Max moving the object, it is it, it is tracking around, right? Max moves again. Yeah, that, so this is this is the object tracking. Yeah, but you can see like when similar color happen, it actually will move to another part, right? Because similar yeah, yeah, yeah. color. So you, 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 you can see like when it selects certain color, then it will track that color. So make sure you, for this, it is very sensitive to color and also to lighting. So you need to carefully select the color. Okay, so Max, can you select another color? Like the blue uh, or, or okay, red? I will choose the yeah. color. Okay. Okay. You see, right. So the yellow color apparently uh, is more stable because, like, the yellow color is very unique compared to the background, right? So if you want to use this and you have a very different color compared to the background, then it becomes more effective. And you can see the histogram. You actually have two. One is the yellow and one is the orange because, like, you can see the shading because of the lighting. It actually gives you like these two color. Right, so this is the the campaign. Okay, so um, Max, can I switch uh, to my screen? Max, is everything okay? I take back the screen. Okay, okay, okay. okay. And uh, now we are to the okay. Yeah, let let me explain the second part. Right, just hold on, huh? Okay, so for the next uh, 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 demonstration, we are going to show a few, okay? So this one is related to people or face. So first we ring up, then we identify the image topic, which is over here. Uh, the Astra is using the RGB, the, the USB is using the USB cam image raw, okay? 
Then we will have three very similar but slightly different uh, uh, example. The first one is a face detection using cascade classifier, right? So this cascade classifier is a very old classic algorithm, but still relevant today is because very powerful and very robust. Even today, although we have very sophisticated algorithm like the deep learning, machine learning stuff, but this cascade classifier is still very relevant because it is a very good algorithm that it use it can use it that you already used for so many years and still today we are using this because it's robust, uh, optimized and so on. So this is for the face detection to detect is there any face in a single frame? Okay. Then the next one is face recognition. So over here, please differentiate between face detection and face recognition because detection is the algorithm to detect is there any face? Okay, any face as long as it's a human face then the algorithm will detect okay regardless whether is uh, whether the the system or the database uh, have that face as a database or not okay it doesn't matter but for face recognition later max will show you some um, learning so face recognition the system will able to recognize this face belongs to who we can associate a name to a face and teach this information to the system and the system will recognize whether is this face belongs to max or belongs to dan or belongs to other people okay so face detection is to detect any face in a frame but face recognition is to detect particular face that belongs to certain person that is trained or is learned by the system before the recognition okay so these are the different then lastly we have the face de uh, sorry people detection which is not using the face but try to use the body okay the body uh, and this is using the histogram of oriented gradient hog uh, algorithm so if you want to know more about this algorithm go to the opencv site to find the documentation right so i will once again invite um jupiter robot max and then to uh, sorry max and i think today is yuan okay to show you these three example right so max i pass back to you max yes everything okay, okay. right okay. yeah so i pass back to you and you can show the uh, okay okay i'm gonna show screen Okay, so we are back to the Jupyter I.O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Ross launch Astra camera. Astra dot launch. Open CV, yes. Face detection. Okay, image. You need the image topic. Okay, right. So we have two person, one is Max and one is Yuan. <laughs> Right, so you can see this is face detection. So, uh, and you can see when the face, okay, because this algorithm is to detect the frontal face. So slightly tilt the face, it might not be able to detect anymore. And you can see when it is closer to the camera, even the eyes can be detected. Yeah. Okay, so can, can I have two face? <laughs> Max, please come into the camera as well. Yeah, so it can actually detect multiple faces in one frame. Yeah, it actually can be more, right? I, I tested like five, 10, still there. Still, we're still able. So this algorithm is very, very good. Okay, thanks.
Next, <laughs> let's try the face recognition. Face recognition. Yeah, you need the image. Control C. OK, so now the first step to run the face recognition is to train the face. So now we need to train the face. So to train the face first, we need to input the name. Right. So first one, so Yuan. OK, so when train the face, you try to put your face in front and make sure you detect <laughs> this is not good. OK, you need to make sure it is yes, then you press. Enter. Max, you might want to try to help this. Enter. Yeah, stand on the center of the camera and press enter. Yeah, you need to make sure your face is detected, then only you take photo. Take try to take a few to make it accurate. Yeah, take a few, take usually like about five, then it should be okay. Okay, okay. All right, so now let's try to train another person. Try to train another person. Okay, so you can see like the recognition is here, but well, we only have one, <laughs> so uh, one is not really good. So maybe Max, you only need to train for the second person. Yeah, you can see like both detected as Yuan because you only have one face in the system. So Max, you want to train another one, which is train your face. Okay, so now Max, please train your face. <laughs> Okay, try to keep only one face in the image. Okay, right, yes, enter. Take a few, take a few more. Take a few more. Okay, right, so let's try to restart the system and we will see if the recognition is correct. Re restart the system. Restart the system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we restart the system and we see if it is accurate. Okay, let's try. Okay, both of you stand in in front of the camera. Okay, Max is accurate. Gwen, uh, try try to have both together. Look straight to the camera. Yeah, okay, you see that the result is quite good. Max is Max, Yuan is Yuan, right? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and then the, the figure behind, uh, sorry, behind the name is actually the confidence level. So this is how we can, we, can, we, we can do a very quick learning demo that the system able to learn just a few uh, pictures and it able to recognize between two faces. So yeah, this is a very interesting um, um, example and I, I hope everyone to try it. But make sure you train enough faces. Okay, just one data is not enough. Okay, because like it will say everyone is Max or everyone is Yen. So you try to take a few so that it it learn the difference between the faces. Okay, so let's come to the next uh, uh, example. The people. 
people detection. People detection. So for people detection, we actually have um, using the HOG. Okay. Okay. Do I select the Peter robot? Is it okay? Can we run the next example? Okay, this one, yeah, you need to stand further. <laughs> yeah, and make sure you can see the whole body, including the leg, yes. So with this, we can detect the, the, the person and we can actually have multiple. So maybe two of you can stand inside. Two person, two person. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. Yeah, so you can see like two person and the detection is quite good, right? So this one, it don't, you don't need to use the face, but it, it detect the, the, the body, the whole body, right? And this is uh, very, how to say, useful and also very simple because we just run one um, algorithm in OpenCV and we can achieve this. Okay, good. So I will um, go to the last part for today. Right, so the last part for today, we have um, the follow me, right? Okay, because so far to now, we are using the, the color information. So um, I, I would like to show you one example that used the, the, the point cloud. Okay, so this is a, the example that used the point cloud that we no need any color information, but we use the point cloud to detect object in front of the robot. Right, so this is the algorithm, but I'm not going to explain uh, all the algorithm. But basically, the idea is to to the, the sensor or the robot is sensing uh, the point cloud in front and to see if there is any object or any big volume standing in front. So that is the robot. Uh, sorry, that is a human. So it will detect the human and it tried to detect the movement by calculating the shifting of the centroid of the point cloud and try to position the robot in order to do the tracking. Then we get uh, the example like this. So we, we already have one in total bot, which is the follow me. So we can run this follow me and we can do the detection. Right, so Jupiter robot, Max uh, and Yuan, please show the follow me example. Okay. Okay, so we uh, we have the robot, then we are going to run the follow me demo. Okay, so this is using the point cloud, not using the color sensing. Okay, so we use the point cloud to make the robot detect the person in front.
OK, right. So you can see it start to track the person in front and it try to keep the distance. So if the person moving to the left or right, then the robot will start to turn. And if the if the person go in front, then the robot will go uh, reverse. This is to always keep like a distance between the human and the robot. This is the people tracking or, or the follow me example. And yeah, and, and there are many things that you can do with this, right? You can make like a shopping cart that follow person. You can make um, uh, the robot to follow the, the master around the house to give uh, to, to, to tell uh, in information and so on, right? So there are many things that you can do with this example. And this is uh, one of the examples that come together with the TurtleBot package, which we will talk a little bit more of this when we do the integration. Right, OK, so thanks a lot, um, um, Jupiter Robot. Um, we will go to the next example, OK? So yeah, let me proceed with the next example. OK. So the last part for today, uh, we actually, uh, now uh, let me try to conclude the, the class for today. So there are actually many more uh, uh, visual perception classes uh, that we can do. Uh, because like there are, there are many topics that we can we can we can continue with this uh, topic, uh, ma many more topics that we can continue for for this uh, development. Okay, because like for example, uh, there are a lot more application using the OpenCV. OpenCV is very very powerful, and you can find a lot of algorithm that you can you can do, and a lot of application can be done. And then we also have for example like human pose, uh, gesture recognition. For example, down there. Uh, on the on the left hand uh, right hand side is uh, the waving recognition is the gesture recognition like human pose like human uh, raising your hand or or, or or give certain sign certain gesture then you can we can use a lot of application uh, sorry algorithm to actually do the detection and also we have deep learning based object detection for example like on the left hand side uh, the the image you can see that is using the YOLO uh, algorithm for object detection. And also, this information can be integrated with the arm so that we can have a visual based manipulation. So, which means the arm will capture something based on what it can see. Because we not only able to detect something, we also can measure the distance, we get the shape of that thing. So, these are the information that is very useful for the manipulation planning as well. So, there are actually many things, and, and I hope today with the very very basic that it, we introduced you here you can actually go a lot further uh, for the vision direction for your development okay so for 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 the assignment for this part um as a practice i hope you can combine the speech interaction that we learned last week and also the visual perception this week combine together and you can actually do a lot of interactive robot vision application for example, design and develop a robot vision application using the human or the object detection tracking with speech interface. So, for example, when your robot detect someone, you can say good morning or, or you can say hello, how are you? And if you use the face recognition, you can even tell like hello, who and who. For example, good morning, Max. You can even tell the name because you can de de determine. And with this, you can actually design some application. For example, uh, you can design a, a, a robot in front of the receptionist counter that in a hotel or, or any 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 um, um, shops that can interact with the customers and so on. You can you can build a lot of like, for example, robot for the library, robot for the retail shops and so on to do a lot of this face uh, interaction and also speech interaction, right? OK, so these are the assignment that that I hope you can attempt and as an exercise. Uh, see how you want to do. Okay, so uh, last before I, I I end this class, uh, I think like I can. If you can give me like about five to ten five minutes, I can invite Jupiter robot again to show you some advanced demo. Okay, so because like Jupiter robot actually have um demo for for example like just how I said the deep learning part, so they have uh the Open Vino framework that is already uh set up in uh, Jupyter robot that they can run for example things like YOLO, things like um, uh, open post, uh, human tracking, things like um, mass 
RCNN and so on. Right. So uh, lastly, once again, I would like to invite Jupiter Robot to show us this advanced level. Max, OK, are you ready there? Okay. Yeah. yeah. OK. OK, so please um, take over the display and show us the demo. All right, so now I think like, uh, yeah, Max is running this Jupiter, uh, sorry, the, the YOLO example. And waiting for the image, right? So we have the image and what we can see that we can, we can detect, you see like bottle, person, and then what dining table, <laughs> what else? And you can see like the va the value over there is uh, the, the confidence level is very high. Like the person is like, 0.99 is very, very high. The bottle is also 0.99 is very, very high. There we have the cell phone and so on. So these are the uh, real-time um, object recognition using YOLO. And yeah, it's running very smoothly as I can see. And you can, yeah, you can actually move the object and it will, it will track as well. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so can we see another one? <laughs> Open post. Open post, yes. So they are using the Intel Open Vino framework in order to run all this uh, algorithm. Yep. Okay. One person, and yes, this recognition is very, very good. I always amazed with this open post algorithm because it run very smoothly and it can have multiple. So maybe you can add one more person in. OK, yeah. you can see yeah. the human number is one. So yeah, it can actually detect more than one. And you can see the frame per second now is about 10. So I think like 10 is, yeah, it's, it's a good number. Yeah, we, we can have the, the object, the, the, the recognition very smooth and yeah, very stable. And in fact, when they are like occlude each other, it don't actually affect. Uh, the recognition as well. Yeah, so this is good, right? Okay, can we see and next the next example? Oh, the next example is the 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 face, right? Face features. So we can use the the deep learning to actually see, for example, like estimate the gender, the age, and also the the emotion. Okay, please guess like what is the age for Max? <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Let's see what is the age for Max. 34, 34, 25. <laughs> okay. So the male is very stable. So it's definitely is a male. And then anger, <laughs> happy, all right. 23, 24, no wonder you're so happy. <laughs> All right, so this is good. Can I have Yuan also try try to see if there's any different? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see if Yuan is uh, younger. Yeah, it's slightly younger. It's 22 or 23. Yeah, the male and female recognition is very good. The uh, yeah the red the the emotion yeah I think it's okay happy and neutral the age is also very stable it's about twenty three twenty four yeah so I think the recognition is very good thanks a lot right okay, okay so last one <laughs> the segmentation right if I'm not mistaken you have the segmentation yeah. So just for all your information, just now, uh, all this information, uh, all this uh, demo is run on the OpenVINO framework, and yeah, they are using like various like deep learning and machine learning techniques, and and this framework or, or this setup actually uh, is open source, so you can find all this, and you can actually change the data, change everything, uh, in order to start your deep learning uh, development. So I, I think yeah, the whole setup is very convenient for us to start like machine learning. Uh, development. 
yeah, so it's very different. Like you have to build everything by yourself. Uh, now a lot of framework will help us. Open open source framework will help us to do this. Okay, so this is the segmentation. So you can see, like, you can segment out the the chair. Where's it? I mean, like, accurately. Yeah, quite accurate. Can I have other thing? <laughs> I don't know other things. If you can add any other thing. Max, you have other thing to put in the in the screen uh, in the in the environment. Yeah, because the computer is <laughs> busy okay. with the moment. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's it's quite heavy. So this one actually use a lot of computing power. So yeah, but we can see the segmentation is quite accurate. I mean, yeah, it it it, it cut out the whole chair nicely. <laughs> okay, yeah, we have another robot. Okay, good. All right, so I can see like, yeah, everything is running very nicely. So uh, these are all the demo, the deep learning and machine learning um, demo that um, that we can we can develop using the Jupyter robot system. So yeah, of course, uh, for, for you who are interested, you can definitely like set up, use OpenVINO and so on. Uh, yeah, but you need to yeah, slowly learn how to install and so on. OK, right. So for those who are, if you able to come to Thailand and and uh, join the workshop, yes, you will be having uh, the opportunity to work directly on the Jupyter robot, and you have all this framework readily available uh, in Jupyter robot that you can start your deep learning or machine learning uh, development straight away. Okay, without worry about the setting up of the uh, environment and so on. So yeah. This is something that I would like to share with all of you. Okay, so I, I guess like um, we already show you all the demo that we prepare for today. So I would like to conclude what we have done today. Okay, so today we have done um, from the first half, we introduce you like several type of camera and also show you how to set up your camera. Uh, including the very general camera that you can find, uh, the USB camera or the webcam. Then once you set up, then we can get the data and you can see how the data look like. Then um, the next part, the, the second part is uh, we introduce several example that is already uh, there that you can just uh, leverage them. For example, the OpenCV uh, apps got, got many very useful application that we can straight away tap and use for our development. Uh, for, for example, the face, the uh, face detection, face recognition, and so on. Right. Then lastly, also, um, Jupyter Robot also show us that uh, now the deep learning and object le uh, deep learning and machine learning technique can be used uh, in helping us to develop better recognition. For example, just now we can see the YOLO uh, object detection. It can detect many type of object very accurately and very fast. And also the open post can get the skeleton very stable. And with the skeleton, we can do a lot, for example, like gesture, gesture recognition and so on. So um, I hope this class will give you some uh, basic exposure to all this technology and you actually able to access to all this technology. Yeah, they are all open source and you can find a lot of materials uh, that you can start your development, right? So uh, with that, I would like to conclude uh, the, the, the class today. Thanks uh, Jupyter Robot to help us to do a lot of demo today. And also thanks everyone to join. So lastly, I can afford like a two or three minutes time to, to for, for Q&A, right? And uh, I would like to invite our Thai local committee member to help me to conclude in Thai. Oh, hi. อ่าครับก็สําหรับที่เค้าโชว์ให้ดูในวันนี้เนาะก็เอ่อสําหรับในพาร์ทนี้นะครับก็จะถ้าใน Q&A ตรงไหนนะครับก็สามารถที่จะเอ่อถามขึ้นมาได้เลยนะครับ
Okay, Jeffrey. All right. So, um, yeah, just as a last, uh, 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 yeah, if you have anything you want to ask, maybe we can discuss after the session. Okay. So, because we already like about 10 to 20 minutes over the intended uh, uh, time. So, I would like to close the session and yes, we can continue to discuss after this. So thanks a lot, everyone joining today. Uh, and thanks a lot, like yeah, you, you are here. Uh, and, and I wish to have more time with you to discuss on this very interesting topic. Uh, of course, I also welcome you to join our workshop in, in Thai so that we can use this to develop more things. Uh, so I look forward for that. And thanks a lot. And I, if you have any questions, we can discuss after this. And um, I hope to see you next week. OK, right. Thanks a lot, everyone. OK, good night. See you. Okay. See you.